So, but Chef Jose, Chef Seth, and Chef Ed, you know, they are all, all year around, once a month. They put in a lot of effort. They are, they're answering so many questions. And we really like this small group. So we have this one-on-one connection with you. So no more than for do, do. November, cranberries. Turkey, great, stuffing its fan too. And let's be honest, who doesn't like pumpkin pie? But when it came to Thanksgiving, there is no one food that really stand out from the culinary crowd, cranberry. Jellied, pureed, cooked into your favorite dessert. These crimson colored goodies are as much a part of the annual holiday and family get together just like the leftover turkey. But even through you are celebrate the season with these tangy little treats, there are probably a good chance that you will never actually give cranberry a much thought. That's all about to change right now. However, as we give you a crash course on cranberry content, from fun fact to incredible health benefit, here are nine things you do not know about the brilliant berries, tangelizing tiblets that may just encourage you to enjoy them all year around. Cranberries are nutrition rich. Back in the early days of ocean exploration, Canadian American sailors used to eat cranberries as a way of staving off scurvy by at sea. That's because cranberries are an excellent source of vitamin C. They are also high in fiber and antioxidant, all of which your family needs to stay happy and healthy. They can actually help fight disease. They may be small, but cranberries pack a big punch in terms for your health. One of the most commonly known benefits of these uh, berries is their ability to fight infection, such as urinary attraction problems. The benefit don't stop there. However, research has also shown that the antioxidant and nutrition that naturally occur in cranberry can also help to better a range of other conditions, including heart disease, stroke, and even cancer. And can even give you a brighter smile. I didn't know that. <laughs> Anybody know that? I didn't know that about the smile. Unlike a lot of berries that tend to leave a higher amount of sugar, cranberries' trademark tardiness came from the fact that they actually contain very little of the sweet stuff. That will be must be to be ears of your ears, but it's not only reason why cranberries will put a smile on your face. Cranberries don't actually grow in water. They are grown in water? Yes. Holy smoke. Did you know that, Chef? No, I didn't. No, yeah. I see a commercial, you know, Ocean Spring, and this gentleman with, you know, when you go to fly fishing and you have that whole, you know, plastic thing, and he's there, and, and I see on the water, and, and like you cleaning your pool with those big poles, and he's like, oh, my God, I didn't know that. <laughs> Contrary to popular belief, cranberries don't actually grow in water. They just put it out there. Instead, you lied to me? Yes. <laughs> Instead, crops grown on vines or on the block and beds that are laid with peat, the clary, and sand. So I did the research afterward because I really want this to be grown in water, and that's just for the commercial. And they were just washing it. Yeah. Hang on a minute. We heard you cry. What about those pictures we seen? The thousands of berries are floating in the water. Well, those are result of farmer flooding their block, which they do twice a year. I didn't know that either. The first flooding takes place each December to protect dormant plant from uh, severe winter weather. The second takes uh, place following October when the farmer food the bogs to release, then the harvest ripe berries from the vine. That is known of the wet harvest. So I learned a lot about this guy, I didn't know. Bunting berries. The reason why farmers are able to wet harvest their cranberry crops is that the berries are actually filled with a small pocket of air. This pocket ensures the berries float, but they also make the fruit bunt, which ineffectively crowd pleasers some Thanksgiving dinner. They can be really 
tough to grow. Tough, they are a native to North America and millions of cranberries are farmed every year. These vibrant berries are actually quite difficult to grow. Not only they do the finicky plants need acid, soil, and plenty of fresh water, but they also require a long winter break. In fact, cranberry vine leave dormant for months and end during colder period, which is why cranberry season is limited just for three months from October and December. You up, chef. Wow, that's awesome. That's you had me at the water thing, you know. That was like, hey, wow. I was so excited. I was I was ruining for that water thing, but but we know why. We know we know why twice actually the farmers they put in all those cranberries in water. So it's a specific way. And I'm surprised that it's very difficult to grow and inexpensive. Because usually when something difficult to grow, usually you have to pay a hefty price, but that's not the case. Chef. Awesome. Thank you, Jaja. That was very helpful and very educational. Um, I just got boring uh, chicken salad over here. Just kidding. So <clears throat> I used normal dried cranberries for this, right? Just throw it in something that we might ha do at home or make at home, right? Leftover chicken kind of thing. So I figured I would just take the chicken breast and I would sear them and then make a chicken salad with it, right? So over here, I have my uh, baguette toast points, my walnuts, cranberries, mayo, light mayo, and a little sour cream. And my recipe doesn't have it over here, but I feel like I was gonna break a rule today. It felt a little wild to me. So I was gonna throw a little bit of almonds in here for extra crunch, okay? And in my household, we do a lot of rotisserie chicken. So that's kind of what happened. This last Sunday, that's what I was thinking about. How can I throw cranberries in my dish and make it pop a little bit? Tying into the teaching kitchens. So I'm gonna start with my chicken, right? Make sure it's already cooled. And in my household, it would have already been pulled off the bones and cooled down, yeah? We don't wanna make hot chicken salad. Unless we don't like the company, then we'll take them out. And I don't like a lot of onion, nor do my children. So I'm just gonna throw a little bit of small red diced onions. And just a little, little advice, I always was struggling with large amount of uh, dicing chicken, chicken breast or leftover stuff. And I find that, let's see, you're roasting a whole chicken and you know you're not gonna eat it all. Before you putting it in a fridge, take it out from the bone. It will be much, much, much easier yeah. because the cold chicken is pretty, pretty tough. So you're planning ahead basically, and you know, then you put it in a little container, not these big carcasses, you know, half carcasses in a refrigerator, and, and you know you're not gonna eat it, so. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of celery in here. We do want a little bit more crunch. Again, um, I actually thought about throwing a little bit of bacon in here and other things too. But just to keep it more towards a healthy side, you know, even though you want to convince the doctor that bacon should be in the food group, it shouldn't be there, folks. It really shouldn't. Because everything is better with bacon, chef. Oh, yeah. Mm. And of course, if you are allergic to any nuts, please, do, you know, you skip that part. The walnuts here, I like to keep them a little bit. Um, you've seen I just rough chopped it just real quick. Otherwise, I would say throw it into a Robocoop or a food processor, but you don't want to lose it into your salad. You don't want to have sawdust in there. And another thing, too, that's another reason why I pull the chicken or dice the chicken, because you don't want to have sawdust chicken salad either, right? Walnuts and our wonderful raisins, cranberries, right? and the almonds. I toasted these almonds. And then the sour cream. So why are you putting sour cream and, uh, and uh, mayo? What is your reasoning, Chef? Why? To have it m like more creamier in body. And what I was gonna say, in this recipe over here, I have two ounces and two ounces of mayo because it's really more about the person, right? I chose to use light mayo because I was gonna make, I mean, put sour cream in it also, right? Extra fat. <laughs> It's up to the person. If you don't want to have the sour cream, don't have the sour cream. If you would rather just use a regular mayo and go from there, 
you enjoy biking. Um, what is that one where it's um, kind of like a mail whip? Whip. whip? Yep. Yeah, that. Yeah. I don't know what it's called, but. And I think too, it's like. Yeah, you, cream whip. Yeah. Miracle whip. Miracle yeah. whip. You could use that too, even if you want. Or yogurt, to. plain yogurt. So if you can't think your calories, so full mayo, you cut the mayo half and half, 50 50, or you can have just plain yogurt. And yep. then it's, you make it much, much, you know, less calories in it. So this was, you know, I was thinking about putting on a crostini and all this and that, and then it's like, you know what, what's, what's wrong with just putting this on like a mixed green salad and some cucumbers or something like that, you know? If it's leftovers once for, for I don't know, like a pick-me-up snack, why can't I have it for a, a lunch, right? Just put up a dollop on it. I, it's what I actually ate on last Sunday. That's why I was thinking about it. And then, of course, like I told you folks, in my house we have a lot of avocado. So if I put this on top of a, like a roll, and then I put my bacon or some avocado, that would really take it to a different thing, right? Maybe did that, put it on a griddle, chips, bang, call it a dish. You can have your celery, celery, you can cut the celery in little steak and where the celery they have the little, and then you just put that in there. And it's so weird, I don't know, Chef, but I like the combination of uh, cranberry and chicken, but I never put raisin in it. Right. None of our recipes is, is actually in culinary wise, none of the chef thinking, you know, put, put that. And I think because uh, raisin is very sweet, too sweet. But funny, we can put grapes in it too. So grapes. you can put, yeah. Grapes, apples. Grapes, apples, apples. So that can be your base and you can add so many things to it actually. I actually tried, you know, I, I, I told you, I'm very open, I'm very honest with you folks. And like I told you last, uh, last month that I don't like oatmeal. Well, guess who got talked into eating overnight oats again? And I finally kicked it up again. So I put <laughs> walnuts and I put banana slice and then I put cranberries in it and I just let it do its business. Next day, I told Sissy, hey, it's breakfast. You got to try it. Yeah. So she went first, and then she's like, Dad, this is great. Same recipe as before. I just added those in. I snuck in cranberries. It's really good. So I, if, just if anybody liked that last um, recipe, I hope that is an addition, something new so you guys can enjoy also. Antioxidant is very, very important for us. And you can... Now you're learning is not just one thing, okay, I'm drinking this or I'm eating that. So all through the week, if you are introducing different, different items in your diet, this is going to have. So like cranberries, antioxidant. And I'm going to tell you, every female should have one ounce dark chocolate every day because dark chocolate have a lot of antioxidant too. That's awesome. That's, that's a fun fact. I didn't know that one. How you like the chicken? Is it delicious? That's awesome. That's one of my favorites. And the walnut, I think they give that little crunchiness. And here's the thing, you can leave stuff out or you can put stuff in it, whatever you like, you know, so. That's the best part. Again, these, the recipes that I, I provide over here and the ones that we have in our database and all those things like that, play with it yourself. If you would like to put um, raisins in it as opposed to cranberries, right? There's no limitation to it unless you're just putting, if you're putting liver in this, then we got to talk. <laughs> I love liver. I'm sorry. I love liver pate, duck liver pate. So I'm sorry, chef, you know, on that one. You can put it in, in stuffing. Yeah. Yeah. And you can actually soak it in little orange juice. Just plum up. You know little what I mean? dirty rice. Dirty rice. A little dirty rice. Go down. Black south. beans and that and rice. Oh my goodness. Anybody have any question or there's something they need to talk about? Yes. What's the difference between what's the difference between cranberry and cran raisin? I don't know. Well, I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's the process of it. So the cranberry, so but it's whole, but you buy it in a bag. And then uh, uh, because it is look like a raisin, 
but they're just a process how they dried it. Anybody usually do their own cranberry sauce for Thanksgiving? Wow. I came to this country, I never have cranberry jelly or anything like that, and I, I have it from the can. I was very turned off, and, and my uh, boyfriend, who's an executive chef, actually made it with an orange in it and everything, and I can, I can just spread it on myself now. <laughs> but I don't like the can one, because <laughs> I, maybe it's just a texture thing. Totally look different when you make it at home. And, you know, YouTube is very great if you don't know how. You can just, you know, type it in there, and in five minutes, it's very easy to make, but totally different. You're gonna take that turkey taste for a different level than you open up the, the yeah. cranberry. The recipe is on the back of the cranberry. Yes, right? it is. I didn't know that, but, you know, of course, you know, I was like, oh, chef, my chef boyfriend, thank you, thank you, Brian, and then I realized, oh, you follow the recipe. <laughs> Hi, Jaja. I do. I've already made my cranberries for Thanksgiving. You did. Yeah, I put them in the freezer. But um, I add uh, grated orange uh, okay. and orange juice, and um, after I cook them, and brandy. Ooh, Ooh. And that's a different level, Chef. It yeah. is delicious. Did you add that to the recipe, or? Yeah. That's her recipe. <laughs> That's her recipe, she said. That's my brandy recipe. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. I never thought That's to put awesome. anything in it, but I'm sure it will be taste, you know, probably the cognac or brandy, dark, something dark, not, you know, light or the color. It's important because, yes. Um, my boyfriend's mom, um, she used to make this cranberry sauce. I don't know if it's a German thing or not, but his mom was German. Um, she would make it with um, cranberries and walnuts, celery, I think onions. I don't know. I don't remember the seasoning, but I'm pretty sure it's just salt and pepper and um, jalapeno. Ooh. So it's kind of like a spicy cranberry sauce yeah. with walnuts. I can see Why that. not? Perfect with turkey. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. I can see that. You see, we're learning from each other. I never thought, but I can, I can see, I can see the the jalapeno in there too, and then then the alcohol, a little bit of alcohol. I can see that. Hmm. You guys have your cranberries, and I'll have the brandy. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't like cranberries? I do, I do. Not cranberry jelly? Just a little bit. Oh, just different. a little bit. You gotta hide it for me. Uh, oh, I'm a picky I see. eater, folks. I'm a very picky eater. I will eat anything, but that doesn't mean I like it. <laughs> but you can understand that. <laughs> because we do not eat it, we still prepare it fantastic. So it doesn't really mean like I don't eat, uh, you know, color greens or whatever, but I know what it's supposed to be, be like, you know what I mean? So it, that, that's not going to stop us. That's not the reason something is not on a menu because chef don't like it. So I just wa I wanted to clear that, you know what I mean? So that's not the case here. Right. That's funny. Well, thank you very much, folks. I appreciate your time. I appreciate the support. I thank you very much. Um, what, next year? Is it year? Next year, yes. January. January. January will be the next one. We're going to send it out, and we're going to send it out for what is for every two months. And I wanted to thank uh, Sam Sam and Sam Eddie, you know, who was part of, and Ingrid, who are doing all the technical thing, and I think we're having a lot of fun, and we continue doing it next year. Awesome. Thank you very much, folks. I have Thank more you. over here if you want some. Enjoy. Until next time, friends.